So recently, I got into machine learning algorithms, and uh, one in one interesting algorithm uh, that I looked into was the k-means clustering algorithm, which splits data into k number of clusters, and actually requires very simple math to actually to actually do. So uh, the first figure just shows all of the data in the data set. Then next, uh, two points called centroids are randomly uh, are randomly placed on the graph, and all the points closest to the each centroid are uh, are associated with the centroid. So as you can see, basically all the points that are closest to the to the red uh, x are are colored in red, and all the points closest to the blue x are colored in blue. Then. Uh, then what is done is the centroids are moved to the center of the data set. Uh, so the, the blue centroid moves to the center of all of these blue points and the red centroid moves to the center of all of the red, uh, all of the red points. Then uh, the data is reclassified and each point is assigned to the closest centroid. So as you can see, these these points used to be red and now they're blue because they're closer to this blue X now. And these two, uh, two blue points are now associated with red. Uh, then what is done is, uh, is the centroids are re, uh, repositioned again to the center of their respective data sets. And, uh, and as you can see, these these points are now in the center, but uh, this algorithm will stop once the uh, once after an iteration the centroids don't move and all the points the point assignments are the exact same. This algorithm seemed pretty easy, so I decided to recreate it from scratch in Python, and it actually proved to be quite simple. So to start this off, I created two different arrays to store the coordinates of the points in the data set and then created the points by using the random function in Python and using different ranges to create three different clusters of data. So the first cluster ranged from 0 to 100 uh, in, both in both dimensions and then uh, the second data set ranged from 150 to 250 uh, in the x dimension and 0 to 100 in the y dimension. And then the final data set uh, ranged from uh, 150 to 250 in both the x and y dimension. This created three distinct data sets uh, that are easily distinguishable. Next, I created three different centroids uh, using the randit function again. And these just ranged from 0 to 250, so it could be placed anywhere on the graph. And uh, as you see, when you run it, it creates three different centroids. Next, I needed to assign each point to its closest centroid. And to do this, I just created this function here. And first, I cleared the arrays that, uh, that hold the point assignments uh, to the centroids. Then I run through every point in the in the array or in the data set and then what i do is uh for each centroid i calculate the distance uh from the point using the pythagorean theorem since this only has two dimensions i can use a squared plus b squared equals c squared but say if you're using three or four dimensions you can use a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared equals e squared or something like that you just add another number and it will uh, calculate the distance in a new dimension i store these distances in the distances array and then calculate the nearest centroid by just finding the min of these distances and finding the index of that the points are then assigned to their closest centroid using this code right here which basically just uh, which just appends the, the, the index of the point to the array 
of the respective centroids. So if it's closest to this first centroid, it appends it to the C1 array. If it's closest to the second centroid, it appends it to the C2 array. And if, and if it's closest to the third centroid, it uh, appends it to the C3 array. I then run the mod function on the data set, which basically modifies the C1, 2, and 3 arrays into their x, y, and coordinates. So for example, the C1 array is split into C1x and C1y, uh, and this is important in, uh, in later steps. Finally, I have the move centroid function, which copies all the centroids coordinates to a new array called old centroids. Then it repositions the centroids to the center of their respective data sets and uh, by, by finding the mean of them and then placing the centroid there. Then it compares the old and new centroid positions and checks if they're the same. And if they are, meaning that the centroids haven't moved, then you want to stop the program and return false. However, if the centroid position does move and they're not the same, then you want to return true to keep the program running. To get the program running, I created a while loop which checks if the variable changing is equal to true, which by default it is, and then assigns the points to their closest centroid and moves the centroids to the center of their, uh, the, da the data points that are classified to it. It stores the output of the move centroid function into the changing variable, so if it, if it returns false, the program will end. Then it draws the graph right here to the screen so we can gauge how well it's working. When I run the program, it starts by uh, creating a graph like this. Then I can progress through the iterations by just Xing out of the graph that it's, I'm first presented with. Uh, and I get a new graph. Uh, with the centroids centered to their data sets. Uh, on my, in my next iteration, I'll see that the points are reassigned. And uh, as you can see, these points used to be green and now they're red. And uh, these points used to be green, but now they're blue. Uh, and I can just keep on going and see these all, as you can see, these uh, all became red and the centroid changed. Uh, and I can just continue doing this until the centroids don't move. And uh, as you can see, this is a final count, meaning that the, the centroids have all stabilized and uh, the program is over. All the centroids are in the middle of their data sets. And as you can see, they're clearly classifying these three uh, clusters of data meaning that the program has been very successful. I hope this has been useful to you. Uh, all the code will be up on my GitHub, which is linked in the description and on my website. Uh, it's really interesting and I'd love for you to check it out and modify it if you'd like. I hope this has been useful and uh, have fun coding.